Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a DIY Neptune Apex leak detector. What is going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now if you've had a tank for a while, you know one of the worst things that can happen is having spring in a leak, getting water on the floor, you know, a hose comes off, something happens and there's potentially water damage, something you might have to deal with. So one of the best ways to be kind of proactive about that is to have a leak detection kit. Now, they're not always the cheapest, except if you want a bunch of sensors all over the place. So there are some ways we can DIY one for very, very inexpensive. Um, so a couple things you're gonna need. Uh, the first thing is you're gonna need a Neptune Apex breakout box. This is something that you could potentially DIY your own. However, they're not that expensive. So, I mean, just pick one of these up and it may, will make the whole process pretty easily. The next key thing you're gonna need are these little raindrop sensors. Um, so these are made for like Arduino or DIY electronics type of projects. And they come with a little interface board, uh, which we're not even gonna use up. And they come with this little sensor. So if you look at the bottom of any majority of the water sensors, it's just a grid or some different lines on the bottom. Now this kit also has this little wire so we can nicely attach it to it. And we're gonna wire this and connect it to the breakout box. So one of the things that we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna connect this up to some speaker wire just to give us a little more room to work with. Um, so we got our speaker wire and we got our little leak detector pad. Now you could just strip these and literally poke them into there and call it a day. Um, so some of these ends are already tinned and I could literally just poke them in and be done. Um, but just do a bit of a cleaner setup. I'm going to solder mine on and it's going to just prevent any issues of it accidentally coming apart at any point in time. Um, so do that. I'm just going to cut the ends off. Then I'm going to use wire strippers and that will pull back some wire. Now, if you don't have a soldering iron, you could theoretically just twist the wires together and wrap some electrician tape around it. And that absolutely does work, but it is a much cleaner solution to just solder it on in the first place. Um, now to do that, ideally you'd also want to use something called heat shrink. So heat shrink is this little tubing and when you apply a lighter or a flame to it or some heat, it will shrink up on it. So it just gives you a watertight seal. So for that, I'm going to cut a couple little chunks of heat shrink off. Uh, next we just wait for the soldering iron to heat up. And we're going to do what's called tinning the wires. So tinning the wires just means I'm going to put a little bit of solder on top of the wires that we're going to solder. So you take a little bit of solder and just touch it with your soldering iron. That, what that's going to do is coat your wire in solder and that's going to help it attach very easily. That's what we call tinning the wire. And we're going to do the same thing on our little sensor wire. Now we got our wires tinned. We give it a couple seconds to cool off and we slip on our heat shrink. Now this is what's going to seal those wires and connections up afterwards. Now we just take our two wires, we touch them together and just tap it with a soldering iron. And it's going to melt that solder together and fuse the two wires. And we'll quickly solder the next connection. And done. So it really is that quick and easy to solder. If you've never done it before, don't be afraid. It is a pretty easy process. Um, so now I'm just going to slide the heat shrink over top and I'm just going to use a flame and just quickly go back and forth on it. And now you can see how the wire shrunk on top. So what this means now is our wires are nice and waterproof. Don't really have to worry too much about those connections. And if you want to seal it just a little bit more, you could put either another strip of heat shrink on top to seal the whole thing or just do a quick little wrap of electrical tape. Now, if this did get salt water on it, it sat for a while, something happened, it rusted, all we do is pop it off, we can plunk a new one on. And, you know, these are very inexpensive, you know, they're only like a buck or a couple bucks each, so it's really cheap to replace them. If you ever did have a flood and something happened, just for kind of future preventative. Um, now we got our wire done, we got our nice big speaker wire, and all we do is attach it to the breakout box. Now when we look at the bottom of this, we got ground, RSV, which I believe stands for reserved, and you got one through six. Now those are the switch numbers, how it corresponds to an apex. Now every switch that you use is going to be from your one to your six and your ground. So you're always plugging a bunch of wires into the ground. It would have been nice if there was more than one ground, so you don't have to worry about that, but not the end of the world. You can squeeze a few wires in there. So I'll put my wire in, use a little flathead to tighten it up. And this one we'll put into say switch six and screw it in. 
Now the one really cool way about this system is you're not limited to just your four sensors. You can literally hook up as many as you wanted to this. Um, so you could say have one on one, one to six, so that could be six different sensors, or you could double them up. If you wanted to say have four around your sump, you could have four all hooked up to port number one, and it's called that switch, you know, sump water sensor. That way you can have regions, and then you can squeeze as many as you want in there. Um, so how it works, if you look at this board, it's full of all these little traces on it. Now, they kind of zigzag back and forth, so if a drop of RODI or salt water or something touches it, it's going to bridge those little gaps and complete the circuit. Um, your breakout box is literally just looking for an open and closed, are these pins connected or not? So, water hits this, it says, yes, these pins are connected, and then you can use that to trigger an alarm code or whatever you want from there. Um, now, I don't know, I've never used the actual branded Neptune ones, so I don't know if they're more sensitive or something else, but this is definitely a good way to do the DIY version on the cheap. Like this, you just connect the breakout box to the port on the bottom of your Apex. Um, that does have this port on the newer Apex as well as the Classic, and I believe it's also on the PM1, PM2 modules. So if you have extra modules on your thing, you may build. Now, if we open Apex Fusion, we should unlock at the top, and we should see all our switches. So I'm going to go up here and find switch six, and so that's where we plugged our port into. All right, so I got switch six. I'm going to drag that down. And where'd it go? All right, so we got switch six at the bottom. And let's give this a test. We got our switch six. That's where I plugged it into on the iPad and kind of see fusion. And we got a little sensor on the floor. So let's just take some water, put some water on it. Um, now, it will probably take a few seconds for it to kind of set the signal at Apex and for that to update fusion. But we should see switch six flip over sometime in a couple seconds from now. All right, so there we go. Switch six just closed. So there's a little bit of a delay. I expect the Apex probably sensed it quicker. It was just the time for Fusion to get that signal, talk to the Apex. So either way, you can kind of see we now got our water on there. So if I dry this off, you know, after another 20 or 30 seconds or so, it should turn that alarm off. So a really quick and easy way to set up your alarm code. Now, if I go into my alarm code, I could say if switch six, Close, then on. All right, so now this should turn on my alarm when it gets water on it. Now, if I had this hooked up to return pump or something, I can say it switch closed and off type of thing and turn off my return pump. So let's program this to Neptune. All right, so now we've got some water on it. And we'll wait a few seconds, and there you go. There's our instant alarm from Neptune. So we got an alarm within seconds. So. It just goes to show kind of how well this works for a quick and easy DIY water sensor. So it's just that easy to make a really cheap and easy DIY leak detector kit. Um, if you don't have one on your tank, I mean, it's pretty inexpensive and it's a quick, easy DIY project. If you have any questions on it, all, just always let me know in the comments. Um, links to all the parts these will be in the description. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video. And hey, if you've got any other requests for any other cool projects or DIYs that you want me to teach you guys how to do it, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.